Welcome to this webcast presentation of Eteplan's Q2 results for 2020. My name is Juhan Aki, I'm the president and CEO. And uh, after the presentation, uh, there will be a Q&A session where also our CFO, Baranes Kodin, uh, will be available to, to answer any questions that you may have. The uh, contents of the presentation uh, is, is similar to what we have had before. So we'll look at the Q2 highlights, the financial developments a little bit more in detail. Uh, we'll also reflect our performance this year towards our targets, talk a little bit about that, and then, uh, then you will have the opportunity to, to ask the questions. But if I go straight into, into the Q2, so uh, as, an, as an overall uh, statement, uh, I, I could start with saying that, uh, of course, um, the, the pandemic that started already at the end of Q1 hit uh, the businesses uh, across the world hard. And, and for us, this meant that uh, we had to move uh, from, from an offensive game that we have been playing for, for, the, for the past years. Into, into a hard defensive battle, and, uh, and uh, we, we really needed to change the mode of operation, uh, which we did uh, very successfully, and, uh, and uh, that uh, brought the quite decent results for us uh, in, in Q2. Uh, if we look at the highlights, so, so um, of course, when the, when the market demand was affected uh, significantly in, in the quarter, Many of our customers had to had to adapt their uh, their businesses and, and took different kind of saving measures. So of course, um, we needed to focus on sales and uh, we needed to try to find uh, all the new opportunities that we possibly can. And uh, and to some extent, we were also successful in finding new types of uh, businesses and new new business opportunities. Through the measures that we had to take, uh, of course, we were also able to to uh, maintain a high profitability of, of 10% in EBITA. And uh, this is mainly due to, to the, all the saving measures that we, we took uh, across our organization. Also, our operating cash flow was uh, particularly strong uh, in this quarter um, due to the fact that uh, the costs went down uh, almost immediately when we took the measures and, and the cash flow coming in from sales uh, you know, drops a little bit later. So, so this was the prime result of this, but also, of course, a good, good management of, of, of the overall uh, cash flow process. And also, we were pleased to see that uh, after some quarters uh, in China, uh, our, our, where our, our uh, number of hours sold to the Chinese market has been declining, uh, now we saw uh, the hours sold to Chinese market uh, turn to growth again, and uh, this was, of course, pleasing. And overall, in China, uh, the, the effects of the pandemic were, were quite minimal, actually, for the, for the second quarter. On the negative side, our revenue decreased year on year uh, by 2.2% uh, for the quarter. And this is, of course, the first time that our, our revenue has decreased since uh, the second quarter of uh, 2014. So naturally, we are not very, very pleased with this one, but uh, there was absolutely nothing we could do due to the weakening demand uh, in the COVID situation. And of course, on the negative side, we were then forced to, to adapt uh, our organization and, uh, and uh, take different kind of saving measures uh, in our organization, which resulted in the fact that some of our, our internal development programs and other things have had to be uh, put on hold as well, uh, which is slightly slowing down the progress from what we would have wanted. On the environment, um, of course, uh, the pandemic was the, was the main, main thing, uh, changing the uh, demand uh, for, for, uh, for us, of course, hitting our customers' order intake mainly, and therefore, uh, therefore hitting also our, our demand. Uh, we saw that there were, again, uh, quite a lot of uh, differences in, in, in different customers. Uh, some customers were hit uh, very hard by the pandemic. Uh, some customers were not affected at all and everything in between. So, so there was a quite wide span of, of different types of, uh, of uh, hits and, and, and uh, actions uh, taken by our customers. Nevertheless, uh, we, we did um, see uh, during the quarter that uh, for, for some of our customers, the, the uh, new orders and the order intake uh, bottomed out already in, in the second quarter. And for some customers, um, the, the trend was turning uh, during the quarter. So some customers were actually receiving more orders already uh, towards the end of Q2 than in, in the beginning of Q2, which is a little bit encouraging uh, going, going forward. Of course, uh, starting from the bottom level, but still. 
And also we, had, we can see clearly that uh, some of our customers are now uh, investing uh, slightly even more uh, to, to their R&D to be, uh, have their products and, and our processes to be more competitive uh, when, when the, uh, when the uh, pandemic uh, eases off a little bit. So, so some customers are taking the opportunity to be more competitive in the future and investing now into, into R&D. And uh, especially digitalization-related uh, investments uh, are, to some extent, already uh, starting. So, so that is again a little bit, a little bit encouraging, despite the, the quite weak uh, demand situation at the moment. And if we look at uh, uh, the, the country-specific differences in this development, so naturally everywhere the pandemic was affecting, but uh, but there were differences clearly. In Finland, uh, the, the general market demand weakened, uh, and, and um, we, we do see that uh, the Finnish market will also stay at the current levels, uh, might even slightly come down uh, due to the fact that, uh, that many Finnish uh, companies and industries are working with investment goods, and, and here the, uh, the um, lead times are slightly longer, and, and, uh, and since their order intake is, is uh, declining in Q2, so this might have an impact uh, on the fall, and, and will have an impact on the fall. And, and therefore, we anticipate that Finland will be uh, through Q3 and, and maybe even Q4 on, on a lower level. Then if we look at the rest of Europe, uh, in our case, Sweden, Germany, Netherlands and Poland, the market conditions seems to be uh, similar in these countries. And uh, we can see that uh, from the, from the, let's say, weakest point of demand, uh, there has already been a slight turn upwards, so uh, many companies have started uh, to invest into, into R&D and into, into different types of, uh, of uh, engineering projects. Uh, also some small investments have been taking place, so, so we have seen a slightly uh, better demand situation uh, in, already in Q2 or towards the end of Q2 in, in these countries uh, compared to the sort of bottom level uh, during Q2, so uh, a little bit in encouraging there. And in China, um, after the pandemic, of course, the market uh, recovered surprisingly fast. Already in Q1, we said that uh, we were back to normal, almost normal levels, which was the case in Q2. There was good business, and uh, we could also see opportunities. And, uh, and this seems to be uh, currently continuing. However, um, there is a hit on the global economy, and of course, it's, it's, it's completely impossible to, to predict what will happen uh, in, in the future. And China is, of course, affected by the, by the global economy heavily, so, so hard to tell what will happen in the future. But uh, so far it looks uh, quite good, and as, as I said earlier, um, our, our, mar our sold to the Chinese market turned to an increase now uh, after some, some quarters of, uh, of uh, you know, getting down. So, so this is, a, again, a little bit uh, in encouraging. If we then look at the, uh, the uh, revenue split uh, uh, in different th terms, so uh, by service area, engineering solutions was 58%, uh, uh, software and embedded 24 and technical documentation 18% of revenues. Revenue by country, Finland 63, uh, Sweden 23, China 2, and uh, Central Europe 12. So uh, this was uh, Central Europe clearly growing uh, due to the acquisitions uh, completed last year. And uh, personnel uh, by country, uh, Finland 60, Sweden 19, China 10, and Central Europe 11. So again, here an increase in Central Europe compared to last year due to the acquisitions. And on the, on the revenue split by uh, customer segment, uh, we have now made some changes. And, and uh, through these changes, we have been able to get the others segment a little bit down. Still, the, the, the forest pulp and paper is the largest one at 14%. Energy, second, 14% as well. Uh, industrial machinery and equipment, still 14%. Mining, 10%, and lifting and hoisting, 10%. So those were the biggest ones. Then, then the new ones that we have now introduced is chemical, which is uh, 5%, which is some customers in, in Finland, and then uh, quite large customer base of the acquired company EMP in Germany. And also, uh, marine and offshore has been now uh, split into, into a separate, uh, which is now 3%, and chemical was at 5%. So these are the changes in, in the segment that we are now reporting. 
On the key figures, um, of course, revenue dropped uh, with 2.2%. Um, EBITA uh, dropped by 3.1%. And uh, EBIT dropped by 7.6%. So a slightly declining uh, result uh, overall. But, uh, but cash flow was uh, exceptionally strong at 18 million, growth by uh, 105%. So, so very strong. Strong cash flow in this quarter, giving, of course, us a very, very healthy financial situation going forward. And if we look at the, the full year, we still were growing for the full year by 3.3%. By uh, operating profit EBITA was uh, relatively on the same level, only a 0.3% drop for last year. But EBIT uh, dropping then... Uh, 4.8%, mainly due to the amortizations of, of the acquired businesses that we have. And the earnings per share was at uh, 33 cents uh, compared to 35 cents last year, so a drop of 5.7% uh, uh, for this year. And the market outlook, um, of course, the pandemic uh, has the most significant impact uh, on, our, on our demand situation right now. And, uh, and uh, in our case, the, the global machinery and metals industry is the one that is driving our, our uh, performance uh, the most. And, and here we see that, uh, that the demand is uh, lower and uh, the, also the um, prolongation of, of the COVID pandemic uh, will have a negative impact on, on our business uh, going forward. Um, Q3, we anticipate after the summer vacations to be uh, uh, a, a quite difficult one, but, but still, as I said earlier, we do see also some opportunities. So it's, it's, it's hard to say uh, how, how, the, how the demand situation will play out uh, going forward. But still, um, we withdrew our, our financial guidance in, uh, in, uh, or right after uh, Q1. And, uh, and now uh, we have, uh, have uh, after the first half of the year, we are now uh, confident enough uh, to, to, to give a financial guidance for our business uh, for this year. So the new guidance is that our, our uh, revenue for uh, 2020 will decrease slightly or be at the same level as in the previous year. And our operating profit EBIT will decrease compared to 2019. Of course, um, how much the EBIT will decrease um, is, is, is really difficult to, to estimate at this point since we do not know how the new, new possible new wave of the pandemic uh, will impact our business. And therefore, we are not comfortable in, in uh, giving any, any kind of further, further uh, uh, guidance on that one. If we then look clearly at, the, at the, just the impacts of the COVID pandemic, so of course, uh, through the negative uh, demand and the, and the declining uh, revenue, so we, we needed to take um, action and we, we have adapted our, our uh, operations uh, in, in many uh, places and all of our countries. And, uh, and uh, we have also had to take uh, saving measures. But um, we were strong in, in moving our, our personnel to, to work remotely, uh, which is currently the safest mode of operation. And 85% uh, of our employees are still uh, working uh, remotely uh, from, from home offices. Uh, we had, uh, in June 30th, we had uh, 335 employees uh, temporarily laid off in, in different countries. And uh, the number is relatively the same now after the, after the uh, vacation period is, is ending. Uh, these temporary layoffs are, are, uh, uh, are possible in, in uh, uh, Sweden and Finland and Germany. And uh, in, in Netherlands and in, in Poland, uh, there is no such possibility to, to, to uh, arrange temporary layoffs. There are some other uh, support measures taken in, in the Netherlands, but, uh, but temporary layoffs are, are not possible there. And of course, due to the, the actions that we had to take, uh, we were able to, to uh, uh, remain at the healthy profitability level. Uh, which is important for us because this allows us to, to transition uh, back to the implementation of, of our growth strategy once the market uh, is, is, uh, is getting slightly better. And, and uh, we want to, to return to the growth path uh, as fast as possible. If we then take a little bit uh, more detailed look on, on the numbers, so, uh, so the financial development in, in, in Q2, 
So revenue, I said, decreased, and uh, organically the revenue uh, decreased is, is um, comparable to the number of uh, temporary laid off people. So the organic change was uh, minus 11.3% at comparable exchange rate 11% or minus 11%. And of course, uh, the, the pandemic had an impact. Uh, and also we have been now very careful with our, our new recruitments due to the uh, market situation and, and the pandemic. Uh, on, the, on the positive side, the acquired companies uh, that we, we uh, completed last year have had a positive impact on revenue. And on the key accounts, the, the uh, revenue decreased by 10.6%. So, so that is the overall situation for the quarter. However, for the first half, we were still growing uh, with comparable exchange rates by 3.7%, which in the, in the current conditions, in, in my view, is still quite okay. Operating profit EBITA was strong at uh, 10 point, uh, or sorry, 10% uh, level and uh, 6.3 million euros. We also had non-recurring items of 0.3 million euros, which were related to restructurings in the in the organization, and also we had some uh, credit losses uh, again due to the pandemic uh, situation. And of course, the the weakening demand has had an impact. On, on, the, on the first half year, uh, the uh, EBITDA percent was 9.6% and we are at 12.9 million euros. Operating profit EBIT uh, was uh, 5.4 million euros at 8.5% of, of the revenues. And uh, the amortizations related to acquisitions were 0.9 million for the second quarter and 1.9 million uh, for, the, for the first half year. Then if we look a little bit more detailed in the, in the different service areas, so engineering solutions, um, of course, here as well, uh, the pandemic had an, had an impact on the demand and, uh, and uh, organically the revenue was declining, but we still had growth uh, of 1.9% due to the acquisitions that we completed in this service area last year. We did have, uh, through the measures that we took uh, in, in the operations, we did have a very high operational efficiency in the quarter and also the savings measures that we took in different uh, parts of the business had a clear impact and, and we remained at the healthy 10.3% uh, uh, EBITDA level for, for uh, this service area. In software and embedded uh, solutions, the, the revenue declined by 10.9%, uh, and, uh, and uh, this is uh, sort of similar as the organic development in the whole, whole company was. And, uh, and uh, here we were also uh, suffering a little bit from uh, uh, insourcing recruitment that uh, some of our customers did uh, in Q1, so that uh, impacted uh, the revenue development. But uh, we have also found new opportunities uh, in, in this area, and, uh, and uh, we have found a new, new uh, digitalization project. So, so we anticipate that the, the pandemic will have uh, the smallest uh, impact on this service area, and the demand uh, will recover uh, the fastest uh, once, once companies uh, start to invest again into, into their business. But our, our service offering uh, fits the market really well. Uh, for example, our offering related to 5G technologies has had very wide interest and we have uh, several uh, interesting discussions ongoing, for, for example, in this area. Profitability was, was uh, healthy, of course, also here impacted by the savings measures that we were forced to take, uh, but, uh, but still uh, operational e efficiency was good, and uh, we, we had a healthy 11.1% uh, EBITDA margin in, in this service area. In technical documentation, um, a sort of similar story to the other service areas. Um, revenue declined by, by 2%. Here also we had uh, impacts on the revenue side from, from the acquisitions that we uh, completed last year. And here, uh, our service solutions business uh, has had a, a crucial impact. The MSI number is relatively high, 79% for this quarter now. And, uh, and clearly, our, our service solutions are, are uh, working well for us, even in this uh, the declining market uh, situation. And uh, profitability here was also uh, on a quite good level. Um, the the uh, impact of, of uh, Netherlands and, and 
not having the possibility to adapt through temporary layoffs, of course, had a slight impact on the profitability here. So therefore, this uh, service area was a little bit weaker than the other two. But uh, other than that, uh, I would say that uh, solid performance uh, in, in the prevailing market conditions. Earnings per share um, for the for the quarter uh, were 16 cents, and for the for the first half year, uh, 35 cents. Uh, so sorry, 33 cents compared to 35 cents last year. So fairly close still. And cash flow, as said, uh, was exceptionally strong here, and uh, this is due to the fact that uh, when we have taken the savings measures, uh, we the cost uh, side stops immediately. And then on the revenue side, still the sales or re revenue or cash flow coming in from sales still uh, comes in uh, at a slight delay due to the payment terms of our customers. And therefore, we had uh, a lot of cash coming in and, and costs were cut uh, faster. And, and therefore, we had a surprisingly good cash flow for this quarter. Of course, uh, when, when we reverse the situation, so when, when, we will, when the temporary layoffs will be ending, and we will also start to return to normal normal business. So, uh, so of course, then this uh, impact will be a little bit reversed. Costs will increase faster uh, than, than the, the sales coming in. And then um, overall, in the long run, uh, the cash flow should reflect our, our operative performance and EBITDA levels. But of course, here, um, once we have had to adapt to, to uh, this kind of a mode of operation, so uh, we have also learned a little bit uh, on how to develop our operations and how to maybe operate slightly differently going forward. So hopefully we can then uh, save some of the, the positive impact uh, from here also into the future. Return on capital employed was at 14.6%, uh, of course, uh, uh, following the, the slightly lower uh, EBIT and, and the result. Personnel um, decreased by 0.1% year on year, and, and uh, here, of course, um, the, the slower recruitment had an impact uh, in the market situation, current market situation. We have not been as active uh, in the recruitment side as, as we would have been normally, and this has had an impact, of course. At the end of the review period, we had uh, 1,303 employees uh, outside Finland, which were growing clearly uh, compared to last year. Uh, which is, of course, uh, one of our, our uh, targets as well, to increase our business outside Finland. And this is, of course, good development. In the income statement, um, there is no um, surprises or no major changes uh, compared to, to what has already been said. Uh, on the balance sheet, uh, maybe a, a notable difference is in the trade and other receivables, which are declining um, as our revenues are, are, are dropping. And also in the cash and cash, cash equivalents, so there is a quite significant uh, change, uh, which is, of course, due to the, the extremely good operating cash flow that we had, and also then the, uh, the uh, loan arrangement that we completed in, in Q2 to, to secure our financing going forward when we were not that secure about uh, how the future uh, would turn out in, in the pandemic. If we then uh, look a little bit on our targets and, and reflect how we are doing ag against the targets, so um, of course uh, the revenue target of 500 million uh, in, in 24 um, is now uh, looking a little bit far, but uh, due to the fact that uh, now the revenue was slightly declining due to the pandemic, but uh, uh, the target is still there, and uh, now after the pandemic, uh, eases off a little bit, so we just need to work harder uh, to, to get to this target. 50% uh, revenue outside Finland. Uh, currently, we are at 37%, uh, and uh, the development in this has been quite good, and we will continue to, to, uh, uh, to work on, on this one so that we can have uh, more legs to stand on, and, and the, the emphasis of Finland will be slightly lower going forward. Managed share, share of uh, managed services of revenue, 60% uh, currently. Uh, the target was increased to 75%, and uh, we are working with, uh, with new service solutions all the time. We are, are building our, our service solution portfolio, and we're confident that uh, with the new offering that we are building, we will be able to, to increase in, in this area as well. And on the operating profit target, we are quite close, uh, even in this uh, difficult uh, in these uh, difficult conditions. So uh, we are 
improving our the resilience of our, our business and the resilience of our business model in even in these types of uh, conditions at this point uh, I would like to to uh, thank you for listening and uh, and uh, move into the uh, Q&A session so uh, please Thank you. If you would like to ask a question, please press zero one on your telephone keypad. If you wish to withdraw a question, you may do so by pressing zero two to cancel. That is zero one if you would like to ask a question. Our first question is from Ossi Vaisanen from Nodia. Please go ahead. Oh, great. Thanks. This is Passi from Nordia. Well, uh, a couple of questions from my side. I mean, firstly, uh, have you actually received some uh, compensation or subsidies from the state when looking at the second quarter? And then when looking at the third quarter in terms of costs, uh, I mean, is, is there going to be something very special uh, in, in the personal cost bookings, like the holiday provisions or the social security payments or, or probably even these compensations or subsidies? And I can start with these two ones and then, then continue. Thanks. Yeah. Well, uh, of course, um, um, now in this uh, this market condition, different governments have have issued uh, different kind of uh, support uh, to to companies to, so that they can uh, get over this uh, this uh, situation uh, as smoothly as, as possible and and to avoid uh, layoffs for or permanent layoffs for for people. And I think that's the right policy. And naturally, we have received uh, some some uh, grants from uh, from uh, different countries in China, in in Sweden, um, and, and also others. Um, here in Finland, the the uh, the pension payment was uh, dropped uh, for, for this year for 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 uh, the rest of the year, and then it will increase. We will need to pay that back, so that's not a sort of grant, but uh, but it's a sort of delayed payment of of the. Of the of this money, so so uh, these types of effects uh, are in the result, but I would say that they are not representing a significant part of, of, of the profitability. I would say that the significant part comes from our, our own actions, the the uh, the saving measures that we have have taken. But uh, but of course, um, we have of course uh, applied for and used all the possible support uh, that there is uh, from different markets, and we are grateful for that. Um, if you look at uh, going forward, uh, there is no special bookings or anything else like that uh, that we would have in Q3. There is the vacation period. We have reserved for the vacation money as per normal. Uh, so there is no special things uh, regarding Q3. Uh, of course, there are certain evaluations that we do, for example, regarding earnouts and other things which we have ongoing. But there shouldn't be any anything too too special uh, in, in Q3. Of course, it's uh, it's uh, it's the holiday quarter, so it will be revenue-wise lower, and and uh, the cash flow will also be impacted. But uh, but there are no special bookings uh, for for Q3. Um, great, uh, that was very helpful. And and when looking at the second quarter again, I mean, um, uh, would it be a fair assumption that you actually you you had a kind of a very good utilization racers for your personnel because of these layoffs, e even better kind of utilization racers than on ordinary kind of market environment. And and when looking at these kind of um, temporary layoffs, uh, are they going to be kind of, uh, uh, are they going to end in, in, in the third quarter or in, in the fourth quarter? Or how, how long you are going to kind of uh, keep up that kind of uh, reserve uh, for, for the cost base there? Thanks. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I would say that uh, certainly our operating efficiency has not been. We are quite good, uh, frankly speaking. We are quite good in managing the business very efficiently. And uh, we have been able to maintain high efficiency also in these conditions. I would say that it's, it's not increasing due to these measures, uh, but, uh, but uh, we have been able to maintain uh, high efficiency in the, in the operations. And uh, regarding the, the layoffs, so the, the temporary layoffs, so, so we have had uh, union negotiations in the company twice uh, for, for the entire Finland and also in Sweden and also in Germany where these are possible. And, and uh, uh, right now um, it is possible for us to utilize 
the, the temporary layoffs uh, for the time being for our personnel until the end of the year. And uh, uh, that, that is the way it goes. And uh, we, we don't know uh, what the utilization will be. We would very much like to have everyone back on board as soon as possible. But of course, um, uh, we do not know which way the market turns. So, so it's, it's very, very difficult to, to estimate how this will turn out. Yeah, I see. But uh, when looking at the, the, the set quarter still, uh, I mean, uh, would it be a fair assumption that your organic growth is, is going to be a bit weaker even in the third quarter than now uh, reported from the second quarter? Well, uh, it's difficult to say. Uh, we are uh, we are still back from from uh, or we are not still fully back from from vacations. Uh, people are still returning, and our customers are are um, are you know uh, starting uh, to look at how their business will develop and starting to implement actions right now. So we don't have that good visibility yet to how how the market is is developing. But I would say that. Uh, as, as, as we were uh, saying in the report as well, the market situation slightly improved at the end of Q2 for other countries in Europe, except for Finland. And in Finland, it seemed to stay at the same levels um, due to the, the different type of industry structure here in Finland. And uh, right now, we see that, that those trends are there. Um, however, there are certain companies where the order intakes in Finland have been dropping significantly and that may have an impact uh, going forward but what that will be how it will impact q3 um, it's too early to tell uh, really but um, it, it might go as you have, uh, have assumed um, then again it might be you know not worse than than the organic growth in in, in q2 yeah thanks i'm happy with this one And just as a reminder, if you do wish to ask a question, please press zero one on your telephone keypad now. Our next question is from Joachim Nonnen from Indirect. Please go ahead. Yeah, hello, gentlemen. This is Joachim from Indirect. Uh, I think I will have to continue with, uh, with the last question and ask, uh, what is the current level of activity compared to the same time year ago, uh, you know, year on year change. Uh, could you comment on that, and perhaps we can uh, get a better picture about the demand situation now? Yeah, it's it's of course, uh, as I said, it's it's now when people are the uncertainty is definitely there. Now there is the the second wave uh, of of the pandemic uh, potentially coming, and uh, and uh, therefore the uncertainty is high. Um, so it's it's quite difficult to say how this will will turn out. But uh, but if we look at the the um, if we look at the number of temporary laid off people, so we have about 10% of our our, our employees uh, temporarily laid off. Uh, we had that before uh, or at the end of Q2. I would say that nothing has dramatically changed uh, since then. So this is the sort of drop that we see in in the demand. Um, However, as, as I said, uh, there are certain areas where we do see, you know, investments also starting, and especially in this uh, digitalization area, uh, software investments and these types of things. So we have had quite good order intake in Q2, and, and we see that there might be quite good opportunities also going forward. But, uh, but it really depends on, on how the pandemic uh, continues. Uh, will there be new saving measures issued by the by the different customers? And it's it's really hard to tell. But uh, but now I think that uh, societies, governments, countries have been able to sort of find a way how to live with uh, with the pandemic. And and we don't we don't believe in in this kind of lockdowns uh, anymore. And and therefore uh, we were also able to give our guidance. All right, fair enough. Uh, about the profitability, I'm just wondering if there are some elements that uh, are going to change uh, when we are going forward. So you told you told that there are some development projects that you have uh, cancelled, and uh, these are affecting the profitability, but uh, and and also the support from the governments. So 
uh, some of these going to change in the third quarter or the fourth quarter, and uh, how should we be looking at this? Um, there is no ma- there are slight changes in the, in the in the different government supports, but as I said, they they do not represent the, a major part of our, our result. They are a small small support for us, uh, which we are grateful for. Uh, but uh, but there are small changes there, uh, not having a big impact. Um, of course, uh, at some point in time, we, we do need to continue investing into our future and investing into our growth and investing into our people even more than we are doing even right now. And uh, therefore, the cost structure um, or the costs will increase to some extent uh, at some point in time. But of course, uh, as we have been doing, we have been managing our costs extremely carefully now for this quarter. We were very quick to adapt and with timely measures, we were able to to, to create this kind of profitability. And uh, we will also be very careful in managing the cost going forward. But uh, but once we do see that uh, that uh, the market, there is opportunity and there is a clear, clear uh, way forward for us uh, and the market starts to turn, then we will definitely continue investing into into our business so that we will be even stronger as a company uh, going forward. So so at some point, yes, we will uh, increase the cost levels a little bit, uh, but we will be very cautious so that we can remain at the high profitability levels. All right, so you are still defensive. So um, far, so far forced to, yes. All right. Uh, one final question from me is that: uh, Do you see some permanent changes uh, due to this pandemic uh, to the whole industry? And uh, if there are some, maybe you could open up the possible effects on the at the plant. Well, I think that uh, it's of course very early to tell. But what what we see is that this kind of uh, this kind of remote work, uh, which is of course being discussed quite a lot in different uh, different uh, countries. Uh, that that will, uh, you know, remain to, to some extent. So so now that uh, that uh, our customers are also seeing that work can be done at uh, at home and so on. So so um, and we have also learned quite a lot in in this process. So I think that uh, when we go forward, so so we will be able to to offer our employees more opportunities to work remotely. And we have learned now how to manage that and how to deal with that. And our infrastructure and our, our way of running the business is supporting this. So I will. I, I think that uh, that going forward, uh, we will be able to 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 offer th- more of these types of possibilities uh, for our employees. And through this learning experience, we are of course also hopeful that uh, that our customers recognize that uh, that more work can be done uh from at the plan offices and and and, and by, managed by it the plan and for this we have the managed services and we have the processes and tools and know how how to do this so we feel that this may pandemic may even at the end of the day support our 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 um, strategic target of of increasing the managed services uh, business uh, at at the plan uh, which is also uh, then supporting our profitability going forward. So, so this is something that we are definitely hoping for. How that will play out, difficult to say. Maybe these right. are the, the most thanks. important changes. Yeah. And just as a final reminder, if you do wish to ask a question, please press zero one on your telephone keypad now. And there seem to be no further audio questions, so I will hand the word back to the speakers for any final comments. Yep, thank you very much. So um, if I conclude, so of course now, we have been growing uh, nicely for for uh, for a long period of time. Um, the last quarter, when we actually were decreasing in revenues, was in 2014, the second quarter, as I said earlier. So this was a little bit of a new uh, situation for us. But uh, as said, we moved into a defensive battle. I think we were we were strong in that. We were able to prove the resilience of our business and our business model. We had exceptionally good cash flow. 
and this will support us. We are in a, in a going forward. We are in financially in a, in, a, in a good position, and uh, once the market turns, uh, we are we are eagerly uh, waiting to to get back to the sort of implementation of our, our aggressive growth strategy again. So we will uh, play the defensive game uh, for us as long as we have to, but then we are, are of course, more than eager to, to move back to our growth path. And of course, uh, should you have any questions uh, after the presentation or at any time, so uh, here are your our investor contacts. So uh, myself, uh, our, our uh, SPP for marketing and communication, so the Tornianen or our CFO, Baranes Kodin. So uh, feel free to contact us at any time. Thank you very much uh, for listening. Thanks. <laughs>